one more day. They've been talking to Joanne Cantwell. Well, Peter, your lads haven't looked overawed by the occasion so far in this championship, but this is a, a different kettle of fish today, isn't it? Well, Joanne, this is a, the most important game that we've played in the last 50 years, and I, I feel as though we're ready for this game. And how are your players dealing with the fact that it is the most important game in 50 years? Well, listen, uh, the most important thing is uh, over the last two weeks, we realised we got to a final. The boys were enjoying themselves. They're taking the training session very serious. We know we have to lift the national gear to beat this Mead team today, and we're all full. How are you going to stop a Mead attack that scored five goals against Dublin? Well, the way I look at Joanne is uh, how is a Mead team going to stop a Loud team that scored one goal in 22 points against Kildare? Well, Eamon, no Leinster title for me than nine years. Is that a, a lot of pressure on these boys going into today's match? Well, I wouldn't think it's a lot of pressure, but it's obviously something we'd like to win as a Leinster title. Um, but we have to approach it as another game. Uh, it's going to be another battle against Loud. We've already had four of them in the, in the championship to date. And uh, we're going to try and treat the, the game today in the same way as we treated the ones here to four. Is getting parity around the middle of the field key today? Well... I suppose it's getting parity and even supremacy are all over the field is what's important. Um, so, you know, like midfield uh, will be a battle, that middle third of the field. We haven't done well in that, in, uh, particularly in the, in the Dublin match. So it's something we'll, ha we, we'll have to work on and try and get uh, at least an even break from there today. Must have brought 20, 25,000 people down for the biggest sporting occasion that the uh, Wee County has experienced since 1960. Won the All-Ireland, of course, three years before that, in 1959, where they were captained by the late Dermot O'Brien. It's a deep ball in, it's a very good one. What a start that would have been, but it's missed by J.P. Rooney. Inches to the, le to the uh, left of the target of the Wee County. That's collected here by Graham Riley. Fed in there neatly as far as the impressive Shane O'Rourke tries to twist and turn Mick Fanning. Looks for a support player. That player was Seamus Kenny. Couldn't take it in his stride. Away by Ray Finnegan. Helped further away over here as far as Andy McDonald. The wing forward. Sheridan's chasing after him. The man on the 40 for me. Good kick towards J.P. Rooney. Takes it in well. Onto the left boot. Looking for the opening score. The big cheer and loud lead. Great opening. He may have been denied a goal by just a little piece of misfortune. And poor timing, but that time he got it absolutely right. Perfect ball in there as far as J.P. Rooney. And he's causing a problem early on for Owen Harrington. Loud lead. Yeah, lovely counter-attack uh, that time right from the back by Loudon. Again, a wonderful ball by Andy McDonald from the wing. Straight across. Cut There's a story every summer in the GAA Championship. Some team coming along and performing with distinction. This year it's Loud. Again, it's Rooney. Looking for a support player. Back here as far as the cornerback who's gone forward, Ronan Green. Oof, almost getting in one another's way. It's back with the number four again. Good pass, cleverly in as far as the midfielder, Paddy Keenan, who've gone forward, and he kicks it over the bar. Well, good interchange of positions. Corner forwards going forward. The midfielder in to receive a pass just in front of goal. Watch it again. Perfectly positioned ball in here, not just hitting it anywhere. And Paddy Keenan showing good composure and knocking it over and loud lead by two points to no score. Yeah, again, Ronan Green says, and Quevian King now with space, with time, and with an opportunity. All the way down as far as Graham Riley. Meath need a score. Can Riley provide it? The answer is yes. Great score. The man who got a goal and eight points in those two matches against Leash in this year's Leinster Championship, draw and replay, gets number one here and makes it two points to one with seven minutes gone. Well, that's one confident young fella, a guy who played in the half-back line during the National League, again, who came on and scored was... His backroom team, Martin McQuillan and Jerry Comiskey. Huge leap in the air by Brian White, who hasn't been involved at all so far. Free kick to me, which is taken by Seamus Kenny. Down here as far as Stephen Bray, ready to take on McCauley again. Gets away from him. This shot is on target, and they are level. Good recovery by me. That's two in a row. First for Riley, second for Bray, and it's Louth to Meath to it. He suddenly showed pace. There were people who said that the Meath forwards didn't have pace. Take a look at that again. Well, certainly just watch Stephen Bray's point that time, but again, you're going back to it, Brian Mead won dirty ball out around the middle of the field, and Bray on the few times we have seen him already in my game.
Well, here they come again trying to win this one. They knock it down towards Brian White, and he has missed the opportunity to take it, and it's back once again with me, and they are pushing forward time and again. It's Bray this time, and he makes no mistake. A second point for Stephen Bray. Two out of three chances converted by him, and it's three points to two. Meath take the lead in this Leinster final for the first time. Yeah, Bray's on fire at the moment, and I'd be a little bit concerned about them. As far as I can see, John O'Brien has been put back into the corner to mark him. Terrific free taker. Hope I'm not putting the kibosh on him now. He's uh, trying to make a better angle for himself here. But from uh, a dead ball or from the hands, usually the most accurate. Looking for his first point of the match. And he's got it. The point of Meath. Stands very straight. Lovely, delicate touch with his freeze. And a lovely shot to put it over the bar. His first pointed free. One from one then. And it's three points for Louth back, minding the house a bit more as Brian White kicks this and levels the match with his second pointed free. 11 minutes, sorry, 19 minutes are gone. And it's four points apiece. This was the foul again here as McDonald was caught on the arm. It's replacing Paddy O'Rourke, whose month's suspension includes two championship matches. It's a big penalty for him to play to miss playing in a Leinster final but he's a young player he'll be back Brian White now big one across JP Rooney waits for the bounce but it comes to Cullum Judge the other corner forward instead inside towards Lennon oh a second goal chance has been missed by Loud this time by Shane Lennon the 24 year old from Kilcurley Emmets there was lovely movement in here Rooney couldn't take it Judge could a little fist into Lennon tight enough angle and unable to squeeze it in past him. Referee awarding the free, noting the number five and saying no more of that. Desi, or Ray rather. Ray is the uh, older brother. Brian Mead. Back to Seamus Kenny, whose uh, dad was, of course, a former Louth player. Shane O'Rourke. Beautifully in as far as Joe Sheridan. There's movement. Sheridan trying to feed it inside O'Rourke leaving it this time to Bray outside it comes again and that time Graham Riley knocks it over the bar for his second point of the match and me they're back in front again by five points to four yeah nice bit of perseverance that time again a good cross field ball again I thought Joe Sheridan was going to get inside his marker Desi Finnegan that time might have got a free in but again the flick on I think this time comes from Bray over to I think it was Graham Riley and again a good score out there well Loud's last score was in the uh, 19th minute it was a free and this one has been tapped over the bar and Colum Judge has got his first point in the midfield but again it is the strongly built Nigel Crawford helped out here by the experienced Anthony Moyles over as far as Seamus Kenny Works his socks off. Taking it on again is Gary O'Brien. He's been a revelation this season, O'Brien. Back in as far as Crawford. He'd love to score. And he has scored. Played his 50th championship match in the opening round of this year's championship. And he's just fired Meath back in front again. With his first of the day here. And it is six points to five. Meath leading. Well, that's the third time, actually. Place of Ronan Green. Clearly they want somebody who is a specialist corner back in there to handle the threat being presented right now by Graham Riley and the rest of the Mead forward line because Riley has just kicked his third point of this final and it's seven points to five. Well, this is one of the bright young stars to emerge through Mead football in the last couple of seasons. Very two-footed player on his left this, uh, this time. And he's got some great points in this year's championship. That's a goal and 12 in four matches. Yeah, and it's such an unfussy point. The ball in midfield and won so many of the exchanges in the opening 20 minutes of the game. That was an area where they had to come to terms with the challenge presented by Louth. And this free kick by Eugene Judge sways in the light, gentle breeze. Comes back out to Mark Brennan, kept alive there. 
by Shane Lennon tipping it out to him and Brennan sets off again goes by the first man Kenny has a go and that's gone wide the, but certainly the first two the, the one by JP Rooney at the beginning of the game I think that was a huge chance so there are opportunities there for Loud if they're good enough nicely set up by Gary O'Brien as far here as far as Graham Riley oh, what a match he's playing almost unnoticed he drifts in and out gets into channels takes his scores he's got pace he's always available who's marking him well who's marking him is right again he's such guile such movement and understanding of where the posts are as you said Ger, he drifts in and out of games but when he's on the ball economy of movement and economy of effort and he's this time lennon has players inside looking for an early ball holds it up column judge Trying to make an angle, loud looking for a score. And hoping to ease themselves into the half-time break a little bit. Gerard, thank you very much indeed. Tony Davis and Pat Spillane are here with me in our studio. Pat, I have to say, I enjoyed that first half. Kind of get the feeling, though, me, they're beginning to just crawl away from loud, let's say. Yeah, this is another one, Michael, of my Jedward games, for want of a bit. Enjoyable and entertaining. Quality-wise, so-so. Meat looked the better team, and were it not for the fact that they kicked eight wides, they should be much further ahead. Uh, some nice passages of play, some lovely forward play from Graham Riley, but like I said, uh, some good kick passing from Meat. Uh, the two full back lines look dodgy, but, you know, you look at one stack statistic there. Lout forwards got one point from play in the first half in perfect conditions mm -hmm. and that's where they're struggling. One ball into the goalie's hands, two missed goal chances and five wides. The Jedwards played hurling when they were younger, by the way, so they might be a bit tougher well, than One of them is out with a crucial ligament injury at the moment. Tony, I'm confused. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Uh, very entertaining game. Loud had their chances. Two good goal opportunities. Goal opportunities. 53 seconds into the game, maybe it came too soon for JP Rooney. Didn't take it. Uh, Shane Lennon had a goal chance. 20 minutes into the game, didn't take it. Mead looked strong. Uh, seven points from play in the whole game. They look threatening, but no, they're still there. They're still plugging away. They're getting their scores by running straight at the Mead defence. That full back line for Mead looks dodgy enough. Anybody looking at this from outside, looking at down the line in the championship, run at the meat backs, they'll follow you and tap it over the bar. OK, we're going to take a break here. And Martin Sludden from Dromoran County, Tyrone gets the second half underway. And Ray Finnegan, anxious for a good start, he's got a lot of latitude. Kicking it down towards JP Rooney, slipped into Mark Brennan, trying to escape the clutches of a couple of Meath defenders. McDonnell out here as far as Brian White, high up into the air. Now, has it got the accuracy? It has. Great score by Brian White, his first from play, his third of the match so far, and he narrows the gap, eight points to six. Yeah, lovely spade work that time by Mark Brennan again, looking out for the better kicker. Mark, remember, his miss earlier in the game, but again, Brian White drifting into space, shoots a very good uh, point to kickstart their second half. And all of that inside the opening 20 seconds. You looked very, very assured once he found his feet in this match, about halfway through the first half showing his real self looking for his fourth point of the game he's dragged it pushed it to the Leinster title long long time since the last one they edge closer they're within a point it's 8-7 great kick no mistake that time followed through brilliantly big tall man lovely technique and sent it on its way safely over. Yeah, great nerve also again having missed the last one. Still from the Meath kickouts, doing well. But that's fisted away by Kevin Riley into the middle, out as far as Queen King. Picking it up here is Joe Sheridan. Looking to set up Meath's first meaningful attack of the second half. Nigel Crawford overwhelmed by pressure. And Brian White kicks it down here into the channel, goes Cullum Judge, didn't break stride, got it on the right, that's a classy point. Lovely score. A second for Cullum Judge. And the teams are level for the fourth time in this really, really entertaining Leinster football final. Yeah, that's quality move from Judge that again loses Chris O'Connor in the run for the ball. Doesn't take him on, just sees the post, has confidence in his his finishing and ability, shoots a great point, but now they're completely on top in the first eight minutes of the second half. The ball is yet in very poor decisions whenever in possession. 
Now Stephen Fitzpatrick kicks it in as far as Brian White, elegantly taking it forward. Now quick presence of mind to see Adrian Reeds on free. Free in there. A lovely sidestep goes by Harrington and cracks it over the bar. That's as good a score as you'll see in this year's championship. That's a lovely point by Adrian Reed, his first of the match. And Loud go into the lead once again here by nine points to eight. Look at the sidestep. A classy move and a classic finish. Yeah, Owen Harrington will be very disappointed in buying that dummy. Again, you've got to credit Adrian Reed with his composure and his ability to. It's a long way out, it's 50 metres from the target as the crow flies. Will this ball fly? Ward to take it, the 23-year-old from Wolf Tones and Mead sends it in, hits the post and goes wide. To come down. And Kean Ward now, this time it's the uh, cheering again coming from the Louth fans. This time it doesn't put him off. And that's a really good kick by Kean Ward, and he kicks it over the bar, and the team's level for the fifth time in this 2010 Leinster football final. Just come back to Mike's his socks off each time. Stephen Bray. Kenny's calling for it. So too is Kean Ward. Two loud backs go to him. Should be a free player somewhere. Loud getting a lot of men back. Anthony Moore is pressing forward, 45 metres out. With the outside of the boot, he lets fly. The umpires have a look at it, and it's perfectly on target and over the bar. And Mead creep into the lead again, thanks to the 32-year-old now playing here in Dublin with Oliver Plunkett's. Yeah, that that's a great score. Great score by Moyes. Again, the most experienced player they have on the team. Again, waited patiently to get the ball put over to him. Mead seemed to be running out of space. No movement inside. Keen Ward seemed to just have run out of ideas. But Moyes made the overlap. The timing was perfect. The finish was superb. And it was the, It's 1957 since Loud won. Back it comes here to Quivine King. And Quivine King falls down in a heap, handles the ball on the ground. And so it's a free kick to Loud, which is taken rapidly by Mark Brennan. Two men going for this one, and it's Colin Judge who gets there first, slipping it out to Andy McDonnell. Now he's just got a scoring chance, and it's brilliantly taken by McDonnell. And it's Meath 10, it's Loud 10, and there are 10 minutes left. Lovely score once again. It just it, it, the crossfield ball again. Good work on the outside by Andy McDonnell to get into position and just has the confidence not to take on his man but trust his own shooting great score so far and you were remarking me this morning uh, martin that made look to have the better and stronger bench well i still think they have the better bench but it surprises me that they haven't utilized yet because the pace has been fast and furious players are tiring at the moment fresh legs could be needed by me as well here's a chance for rooney what a goal by jp rooney 63 minutes on the clock is that the significant move, uh, moment in this year's final. Mr. Gold chance right at the very, very beginning of the match for Mark Brennan's long, lofted ball in. The defenders missed it, but Rooney was coolly on hand to get it on the right boot and slot it in brilliantly past Brendan Murphy. And it's loud 110. Mead, 10 points, seven and a half minutes left. Wow. Well, that was some goal, and again, credit Rudy. He's had a poor game, he hasn't been in the game much. He's missed a couple of opportunities. By God, he made no mistake that time. That's fantastic. Stephen Bray on here towards Graham Riley. They look for an instant reply. He went down, unceremoniously taken out of it on the 20th. Free kick instead. Kean Ward will take it. This to cut the deficit. He's got a third point from a free, and the margin's down to two points. Yeah, it was a cynical tackle that time by Paddy Keenan. He knew the goal might well wake me up. And they still have time as Kean Ward kicks through the ball expertly. That's brilliantly done. No sense of a crisis. Just stroked it brilliantly, almost effortlessly between the posts. And it's 110 to 12 points. Yeah, fabulous score that time. Again. And that's short but it comes back towards Kevin Riley. Me, they're looking for an equaliser. Graham Riley, and the referee has halted the play here because 
Colum Judge, who's got a yellow card, is in danger of getting another one for hauling down Kevin Riley, and Loud will finish this match with 14 players. And that's proper order. There was absolutely no reason whatsoever for Colum Judge to do that. A late tackle, totally unnecessary. On the yellow card, he should have had a little bit more weight, but just watch him here. That is senseless. He's missed a few. This one he needs. This one he's missed. He's missed his third. And it's still 110 for Loud. 12 points for Meath. Incredible. Set out on a journey back in Port Leisure. One of the early Sunday game series. Game two, I think it was, when we showed you Meath playing against Offaly. Loud were on the same billing against Longford. Nobody thought, I think, at that stage they'd meet in a Leinster final. But they've served up a very dramatic affair here. Brian Mead. Mead with 15, Loud with 14. Will that be a telling factor as Bray kicks it in? There are players challenging for it. Out it comes in the end, Paddy Keenan just kicks it away, but the referee has blown his whistle. Courage to be magnificent. One man watching it down there right now is Charlie McAllister. I've known him for many years. One of the greatest Loud men that I know. He's been ill. It's great to see him here. And now he's living on his nerves like the rest of them because... Eamon McCauley has just conceded a free kick, but it's inside the mead half of the field, and the referee calling aside another Meath player. This time it's Cormac McGuinness, and uh, the linesman pointed something out. Marty Duffy, the linesman on this near side, to the referee Martin Stodden, so there's another yellow card, and it's given to Cormac McGuinness. There was going to be a free kick. Now is the referee going to change his mind and throw the ball up as a result of all of that no I don't think so Ger. actually Jay Peroni on two occasions there has kicked the ball away needlessly again unsporting behaviour and gets a yellow card for it well correctly so we're almost at the end of the three minutes now is there a recovery for Meath will they get a replay will they get a point Kenny tries to get it Paddy Keenan goes down, tries to take it. The loud captain kicks it away. Anywhere will do. JP Rooney challenges. Back it comes to Stephen Bray. What a Leinster final this is. Across here once again, fisted out somehow. Only as far as Graham Riley. We're now in the fourth minute. It's high up into the clouds. It's in towards Joe Sheridan. It's. Oh, yes! It's stopped on the line somehow. Seamus Kenny had the chance, and it's in the back of the net. It's in the back of the net. Somebody scored it. Now they're protesting that it was pushed in. Meath fans are celebrating. Is the goal being given? You can see Aaron Hoy in there saying, talk to the umpires. Dramatic last few seconds here. My God, that's dramatic. What it's, happens? It's a goal. The goal has been given and Meath are in front. And Meath are about to win in the most amazing circumstances heartbreak for Loud this is where they thought they had done their bit of defending but somehow it was put in over the line well, was it kicked in over the line? it was thrown over the line more or less but first, the first situation Seamus Kenny fielded the ball in the square should have been a free I think for a square ball secondly Joe Sheridan I think threw the ball it over was, the line yeah. or fell over the line with the ball and you cannot have been do allowed. that cannot do that but the goal was given and Loud will be heartbroken after all this time. That is daylight robbery. Victory snatched from their grasp. There's a yellow card there for Aaron Howey for his protestations, but it doesn't matter. Well, I thought in the first instance that they wing forward. It credited him, Seamus Kenny was in the... It's all over. Meath have snatched this game. A case of daylight robbery.